Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. Time for another book review now. <laughs> You'd be surprised at this time round. It is not a library book. It is a book that I bought and I bought it with a voucher that I was given for some good work I did some time ago. So I thought, what am I going to spend it on? I'll spend it on a book. And which is the book that I bought? Well, I bought two books, two books both from Umberto Eco. <laughs> and I bought this book, How to Spot a Fascist. Uh, I wonder what the... Um, <laughs> what they would think if I uh, told them what kind of books I spent their money on. <laughs> okay, so why did I buy this book? Interesting, it's a little book, isn't it? I read it within an hour. It was a book that was first introduced to me by um, another book that I had read and reviewed recently, Barry Jones. And in Barry Jones's book, he does mention how to spot a fascist and specifically a section in the book that talks about newspeak, you know, the rhetoric that politicians tend to talk and waffle on about and somehow make it sound as if they are knowing what they're saying and how it kind of, they think that it should be making sense to us. Now, newspeak is also something that you would have uh, come across in George Orwell's writing. So I thought, right, I had a spot of fascist, Umberto Eco, and it is, I'm going to write it out, write it out, I'm going to say it out here that it's a selection of three thought-provoking essays on freedom and fascism, censorship and tolerance, including Eco's iconic essay, Er, Fascism, which lists the 14 essential characteristics of fascism and draws on his own personal experiences growing up in the shadow of Mussolini. So it starts off as he's a, he's a kid growing up and he's writing these essays about the glory of Mussolini. But obviously over time is what, what happens after the war, he gets to know the real truth. And this one was written in, I think it was in the late 1990s, where he's really drawing upon, well, you know, how, how wrong he was, how he was swayed by these ideas at the time. And it's obviously a good concept to, to talk about here because especially at this time I took some notes here into in, in my diary and he talks that um, basically fascism is a totalitarian regime that subordinates all individual acts to the state and its ideology and what is its ideology its ideology is the fact that kind of truth is already discovered it's out there so anything else whether you are someone who doesn't agree with it, whether you are an ethnic minority, whether you are a female, whether you are someone who um, has, I guess, something to say, an intellectual, um, then obviously you're someone who is discounting the truth. Now, the truth is whatever this totalitarian regime would deem it. So for them, for them, it's all about the rejection of modernism there is um, Echo, Echo talked about the cult of traditionalism, this uh, perception that the past was good because that's how things were, that was the truth, and yet somehow modernism has changed that, where the new ideas ha have changed that. It also appeals to the middle classes at a point where middle classes might get despondent, not the word, but irritated, frustrated by certain economic activities that make them think about, hey, the good old days were in the past. So what else does he say? Uh, fascism basically appeals to xenophobia. Um, again, uh, anything new, any people from different countries present different ideas, therefore they're not followers of the truth, therefore it is bad. There's also this concept that fascism has a real machism um, element to it. So there's a contempt for women, an intolerant attitude towards women uh, or any non-conforming sexual habits. Read, obviously, uh, homosexuality. Uh, and so also the last point was obviously about newspeak, the fact that they, it's all about rhetoric. You really don't know what a fascist true thinking or true ideology is about because it is changing all the time and this uh, increase of fake news of changing the story of 
rhetoric and not really getting anywhere. Uh, also censorship that uh, now Echo actually talks about censorship being through silence or censorship being through noise. So you can have either lots of noise that kind of drums out all the voices or you can have complete silence where it stops all the voice voices completely. Both, both are bad. But he puts a point across that what we really do need is, um, I guess, some reflection. We need to be able to, uh, in silence, be able to sit and think and reflect on what it is that we are losing or gaining out of this. And, you know, it's really, it was really interesting reading this book because, especially at a time in Australia um, and actually in, in in all around all around the world the, the world seems to be in such a state where never before has a lot of tension across all different countries been prevalent at at one point in time and we're living it right now and the fact that a lot of governments seem to be uh conservative governments they're isolationists closing borders things like that so you, you kind of tend to wonder where are we at as a society and as a world right now at this point in time and you know are we are we under fascist governments or thinking are we going towards that way or is the technology making us feel <laughs> that way so uh really look a really interesting read uh i would highly recommend any of umboto echo's books this one was a nice quick easy read Easy in a sense of being able to get sucked straight into it. Easy, not easy with regards to really sitting and thinking about our, I guess, the world situation and where we are at uh, nowadays and whether anything really has changed since late 1930s and even earlier from, from those. So anyway, that is How to Spot a Fascist by Umboto Echo. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching.